welcome and welcome back. It's Fossil. And it's Spawn. And we're here. I have a really cute... Sh- oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> Stronking. <laughs> I have a really cute... I have a really cute story to share about Miss Fossil sitting right next to me. Oh. Um, it is Mother's Day currently as we're sitting here recording this, but we do know that you guys will be listening to it a little bit after. However, this was absolutely adorable. Um, so Fossil the other day, we've been having lawnmower issues and she was determined to figure this little bitty out. So, um, she's been messing with it for a few days. Don't want to go too much into it, but overall, um, she went outside the other day. She finally got it hooked up to the battery where she was going to jumpstart it, right? Using... Yeah. Using the car. Yeah, I'd never done that before. Yeah, she'd never done it before. Um, this is, you know, a girl in the man's world, right? Um, big dogs. Had to try. Had to try. Have to try. So, I'm laying in bed like a lazy piece of shit that I am. Stop that. <laughs> no. <laughs> it was. No. I was... That's not fair. I got up early. I wanted to take care of things. Things were quiet. Okay, that's great. But I was still being a lazy piece of shit laying in bed. That's your judgment on yourself. I okay. didn't think that at all. Okay. Yeah. Oh, oh you didn't think that. I didn't. I, I, I literally thought, oh, good, I have the car. I don't have to ask anybody. Anyways, <laughs> unimportant to the story. I was laying in bed and um, mom goes out and after days of trying, I finally hear it turn on just brrrr. Now remember, I'm at the top of the house. She's in the garage. Like I... I should be able to hear her, but not really, you know? And I just hear, woo! <laughs> it was the cutest thing. All I know is I felt really good about it because, uh, it, probably more than a week, because from mm-hmm. the time I realized that the lawnmower wasn't going to start to calling and finding out that there was a five-week waiting period on the repair shop that does this for us, and then I begged the guy, I'm like, I don't know what to do. What should I do? And he basically said, do you know how to jumpstart? And I said, I've never had to do it because I've always had like triple A or I had when Big Daddy D was alive and he took care of these things. So I know there's a lot of people out there going, what? You've never had to jumpstart anything? Well, yeah, but I learned. I just... I had to do it and I didn't, I, what was I going to do? Spend $3,000 on a new mower or just try and I did and yeah, so. I have a feeling that's not what people are thinking. I don't know well, how many people I know that have genuinely even used a freaking lawnmower. But so. the, the even more embarrassing part is I had to Google how to open the hood of my Car. I just I don't feel like that's that embarrassing. But it is very I'm, embarrassing. There's I'm a lot of people who have older vehicles, and my vehicle's seven years old. But in the seven years I've owned it, I've never had, never had to, to pop to. the hood because well, I always took it in for service. I never had to deal with it. I never changed my own oil. Why would I? I don't know. I, I think don't that's think it's embarrassing. Okay. Well, I don't know. Let us know if we should be haha laughing at. I think it's Ms. privilege. Fossil. I think it's privilege. Absolutely. Yeah. But. I, I don't necessarily think it's embarrassing. I don't. I genuinely don't know how many people do that. That are especially women. Even though is it not the same when we look at people who um, have really really lots of money that grew up with really really lots of money and don't know how a stove works? I mean, isn't it isn't it kind of the same thing? No, honestly? I don't think it's the same thing because the okay. thing is is that a lot of people don't even have cars. Because they live in a city or, you know, they live in an area where they don't need a car. That's fair. I've always had a car, but I've always had other people repair it. The whole point of this story is that I felt really accomplished that something that I was kind of afraid of with anything with a a motor or penis, you're going to have trouble with it, right? So, I mean, honest to God, (laughs) here I was, I was facing that machine, female versus machine, And even though it was something as simple as a battery, I mean, I thought if I took it apart, I'd never get it back together again. But the guy walked me through it and I said, is there any way I can do this wrong? And he said, not really. As long as negative, negative, positive, positive. Great. Awesome. (laughs) So when that thing fired back up, it was 10 bucks to recharge that battery. I felt so accomplished. Yeah, it was really cute. (laughs) Somewhere... On the other side of the universe and another dimension and realm, Big Daddy D was going, 
That's my girl. Aww. <laughs> He's like, look at that lazy piece of shit. Still in bed. <laughs> <laughs> no. No, but see, that's a good way to get your self-esteem built up. That's the key to it. Honest to God, the key is picking something that you're afraid to do mm-hmm. and doing that first step. Yeah. And then doing the next step. And then when you actually accomplish it, you feel so good. And that is how to build self-esteem. There it is. The key. The answers. The key. It sounds really <laughs> cheesy and cringy, but it, it's honestly it's really cringy. true. It's the absolute truth. Yeah. Pick something you're afraid to do that you know is going to better your life and try it. We got to stop using the word fail. Um, explain. We tell ourselves that when something doesn't work out, we failed instead of saying we just learned one way not to do something. Doesn't that sound better? That's great, but now you're just adding more words on to something. Just tell yourself you failed and that's okay. But people, no, you got to change the vocabulary. Failed will always mean something negative. You're never going to change the meaning it of it. It doesn't have to mean something negative. You're it shouldn't like, mean something negative. If you're like, negative. oh, I tried that. Because I, again, like... When I was at the gym yesterday and I failed on um, repping out that last rep, like, is it a negative because I didn't get it? Like, eh, but I wasn't, I was like, oh, okay, can't do that today. You know what I mean? But that's because you're already okay with saying I didn't do it and that was okay. Yeah. If, but if you're a type of person that just totally seizes up with the word fail, I mean, what does that mean for you? What does failing mean? I guess. If yeah. something doesn't work out, it's not the end of the world. You just try again. And a lot of people don't, though. What happens if it's something that's more permanent? Like you fail and there's no real There's no back. such thing as permanent. To me, there is. it's just a deciding factor if something doesn't work out. There's going to come a point where you say, I'm not going to continue doing that. That's what you're saying. Well, what I mean is like... because. I guess one of my biggest fears would be to like fail a class or to not do well in a class. And I have failed a class and I took it over. Right, but you, that failure is still permanent on your record forever. Why should you care? Well, if you want to go to law school or and you do it again school, and you keep you keep trying, but and your you GPA keep is failed by that point. Like it, it you isn't can't though. Get it back up at that point. You keep going until you do it. Okay. If you really want something, you're going to keep going until you do it. Who was the guy from Alibaba? How many times did he get told no? He went after something umpteen million times and he just did not take no. And he went back and he applied and he went back and he applied and he kept doing it and kept doing it. Mm -hmm. How many of us do that? You are definitely just an optimistic person and I am not. (laughs) I, I can't say I haven't given up on things, but it's because I realized I didn't really want it. It's not because... I haven't given up on things, but for the most part, I won't stop. I mean, it's great to look at failure as um, an ending to a path that you weren't supposed to be on and to just try a different path. Like, I agree with that sentiment, but to look at it in a positive light, I don't necessarily think is always great. If you know in your heart you really want something. Yeah, You don't give up on it. No, absolutely. Just because it got hard or just because it didn't work out or it didn't work out. Not with people. I'm not saying with people because that can change from just because you love somebody doesn't mean you have to be with them. That's not what I'm saying. I'm talking about situations and moving forward with your life of where you want your direction to go. You will be steered by those things. I think what I meant is not every failure should necessarily be seen as a positive thing like sometimes you need to look at those failures and look within yourself and say okay i really messed that up and here's what i did badly and it's okay to say i messed up there and it's not a positive thing all the time it's it's a negative looking inside yourself what needs to change what needs to you know what where can i do better Your example was if you fail a class Mm -hmm. and can't get into law school and I'm saying, ha, bullshit, Mm -hmm. you take the class again. No, not that you can't get into law school, but your GPA is fucked and you're going to have to do a lot more or or go to a worse law school than you wanted to go to. Or you make sure that you get into those interviews. (laughs) There's always a way. And then you, then you talk I to them. I just have to disagree with you on all right, that one. All right. But, because I, I think our 
uh, perspectives on school are very different. It's a, it's a statistics game is what it is. I'm telling you at 53 years old, if I went back to school to become an attorney, because let's say for some reason I just decide that that is my new love of my life. Yeah. And I, I can tell you right now, I would not stop. That's great. Um, but you would have to be okay with, if you failed a class, not going to the school that you thought you wanted to go to. Right. But if, if that was my dream to make it happen, you would make, I would make it happen. I wouldn't put expectations. Are you going to Lori Laughlin it? Yeah. (laughs) I'm sorry, sweetie. No. If you're failing a class, you're probably not getting into Harvard. The point is that I don't put expectations on how I get there. I don't have to go to that school. I don't have to work for that company. It's mm-hmm. like, if that is what I want to do, that it, it, you go after the joy of what it is you're, you want to right, be. Right, but then the flaw... Without expectation. The flaw with that is that you're saying you can't have expectations on it, but a lot of people's expectations are to do that very specific thing. Do you see what I'm saying? It's not about I do, but how we get there. I, a lot of people, it's like, I want to do this specific thing. I think what we need to define here when we're saying what is success for ourselves, where, what is the definition of success? If we're after a a certain goal, a certain career, define success. And if, if it has anything to do with monetary values, then just, just step aside. If all you think of, I want to be famous and rich, then you just need to stop because you're thinking like a four-year-old. Well, especially if you have no real thing to give the world. If you're like, that's all I want to be, but I have no be- yes. way of knowing how I want to get there. You're not saying, I want to have you know, notoriety for my films that I create, or I love you know, writing, and so I want to be recognized as a really great writer, you know? It's if you solely your goal is to be famous, that's it never, concerning. Well, it never works. Honestly, I wouldn't or, say it never works. You get 15, I would not say it never works because that is not true. However, those people are very sad and no. it's not fulfilling. It is not fulfilling, yes. The secret to life is being fulfilled and happy, being useful. That's been proven. Um, again, I have to disagree with that because everyone's definition of useful is going to be different just because I don't, you know, give all of my time to an animal shelter doesn't mean I'm not useful. You know what I mean? And there are people who look at the arts and say, that's not useful. And there are people who look at, that's not what, that's not what it means at all. What I'm saying is you need to feel like you've had a purpose and I don't care what that is for you, what that is for you. If you feel like you're doing something that is helpful in your mind, that is all that matters. It has okay, nothing but- to do with external validation. You keep going back to external validation yeah. as if that's important and it's not. And that's the difference between somebody who's successful and somebody who isn't. Because all of these fears are based on what other people think of you. You cannot ever control what somebody else thinks of you. I think there's this really interesting conversation to be had about the difference between fitting in and like conforming versus um versus like this individuality complex i am in this realm right now at the school i am at where i just feel like everyone's fighting to be so individual but to the point where they're literally all the same does that make sense south park I think did this exact thing. Did they really? They did. Oh, God. Because there was a whole thing of, I am not a conformist. And they had the, the oh, kids wearing yeah, yeah, wearing yeah. the goth outfits. And then they had the emos. And, and it was they were making, I am so not like, yeah. And then it, yeah. literally everybody looked exactly alike. That was their point. This it's, is so judgmental of me. Yeah. Like, I'm quite aware this is very, you can be whatever the fuck you want. Like, Genuinely, I don't think, I mean, people care, but it's getting to this point where everyone wants to be so different that they're all turning to the same aesthetic and they're all turning to like being the same type of person. Do you know what I'm saying? Is this just me being mean? No, I think this is an age old issue. Yeah. We're so worried about trying to be the right thing Mm -hmm. that we're not being ourselves yeah 
Yeah. And I think that's it in, in, in the nutshell. That's my favorite line, right? In the nutshell. In the nutshell. My <laughs> bullet point for this is we're trying so hard to be individual that we're not being our unique selves. We're thinking so hard about it instead of just being. Yeah. And if you don't think about it and you go through your day, when you're sitting in your room, scratching your ball sack or whatever <laughs> we do, right? When we're in our Twirling room. your asshole hair. <laughs> when we're just... Who we are with no judgment, nobody looking at us. Who are you? And Mm -hmm. if we can get to the point where we're not thinking about it, we're just being, Mm -hmm. that's when we're at our best, Mm -hmm. honestly. Because it doesn't matter who likes us, who doesn't like us. I mean, I think it matters a little. Like, <laughs> okay, so there is, okay, so let's, let's back up a second. Yeah, let's back without, up a second. Without turning it into an after school special again, I'm going to try and be very aware of how I phrase things now, because I think there's a tone I must get I, I that think, shuts you off. I think off. the thing that shuts me off is, it's so extreme, because the thing is, is by saying people don't matter, that's not fucking true. You need people to like to go you. go into something. Okay, then I'll shut up. No, no, no. Let's get into good fitting in versus bad fitting in. Okay. Good fitting in, bunch of different people from different backgrounds getting together to work on something, group projects, keeping our mouth shut over differences and just letting someone else be themselves and saying something even maybe necessarily problematic because they don't recognize it saying, I heard that and it bothered me a little bit and I see our differences, but it's okay. That's good fitting in. Being a human, working on humanitarian efforts together. That's good fitting in. Going on a dance floor, any dance floor scenario where people are just, somebody's dancing like a frog in a blender. There's somebody over there doing floor movements. There's somebody in the, on the other side, you know, flailing their arms in the air. That's good fitting in. You're just, you're all together, just doing your thing, right? You, you think of a ballet recital. Everybody's doing the same thing. They've trained for this. They're trying. That's good fitting in. Bad fitting in. Going to a furry convention. <laughs> See, but that's judgment. I agree with you. Like, I, no. I do not support that. However, <laughs> Serial Killers Anonymous weekly meetings. Okay, but here's the thing. Here's the thing. Serial killers and furries are not the same thing. You don't like, fr- like, again, take the judgmental side out of it like they're not hurting anyone this is me throwing ideas at you trying to be funny i was hoping to play off of you and it's not working i want to go back to your first point though i did not like your first point about fitting in okay because you said if you're in a meeting Mm -hmm. and then someone says problematic just letting it go no acknowledging that you can keep your mouth shut and let somebody be an asshole sometimes it's okay to let somebody be sometimes but if it's actually bad and yeah. you have a chance if it's hurting someone else you got to speak up yeah but it's usually is hurting someone else that's why you would speak up it's if it's problematic it's probably because it's misogynistic or racist or homophobic or you know xenophobic or whatever any of the phobics and so that's probably why you're gonna be like hey can we not do that and because if you don't say anything like they're not even gonna realize that they said something offensive all right so when I, when I mean, when you're in a room and you're in a group of a uh, variety of different people from different countries Backgrounds, yeah. and, and, and social networking, whatever, however you word that. When you're in a group of mixed group of people mm-hmm. and you hear someone say something and someone else winces you may or may not need to speak up because sometimes that person needs to speak up for themselves, right? And if they do and the other person wants to bully them down, then it is within your right to stand up and say something, right? If somebody is um, a political party that is opposite of yours, there is no need to speak up. There really is not a need. No, but I, I think there's a difference though because someone being a different political party than you in and of itself is not bad at all and there needs to be nothing to be addressed in that situation but if there's a person from another political party who says something racist or really harmful to a good people then yeah you're gonna address it i've heard people say really stupid things well i mean we've had a couple gender identity things that have come up where 
we all just look around and we're like, oh my god, I can't believe that person just said that. Just said that and are clearly offending someone who is either non-binary or trans. And then, you know, you may or may not let it go. Um, again, it's a case by case basis where it's like, okay, that person, it's not even worth it. But then a lot of times, if it's like blatant, like hatred, you're gonna be like, shut the fuck up, stupid dick. What would you consider proper fitting in? Fitting in. Yeah. What? Okay. Because we think about think about words and how important they are. Mm-hmm. Are you being? Are you fitting in? Are you blending in? Are you conforming? Or are you being a lemming? Those are all very different flavors. No, that's so true. That's a good point. So when you walk into a room full of people that are very different from you, Mm -hmm. imagine being the only black person walking into an all white environment. Are you trying to blend in? Are you trying to conform? Are you trying to fit in? So it's all going to depend on the emotion at which you're, entering this room are you comfortable in this room are they a bunch of your friends are they a whole new group of people you've never met before is it a business meeting is it a school function again what's the scenario i think that's a case-by-case basis you can never you can never really truly answer that because if you don't feel comfortable around those people then you're gonna have to conform but the number one thing will always be how much you know yourself how much self-esteem you have and if those people's opinions even matter to you. But if it's a dangerous situation, then they do matter. No one should have to walk into their school function and feel like their life is threatened. I mean, I didn't feel like my life was threatened, but I, I knew I was not... In, in a good environment. Good, I knew I was not safe. That's yeah. a whole other whole other problem, isn't it? Yeah. That we're that dangerous to each other. What about going in reverse, not wanting to fit in? That's where I feel like we're in this weird in-between right now. I feel as if America harps on the importance of being an individual and how you will be rewarded if you're an individual. However, that's not true at all and they yeah, I don't want see you any proof of that there there's a literal scale where america is the most individualistic uh country there is and that we actually um commend and and want that but if anything i feel like our system has entirely shown that they don't want that you say that out loud that america is looking for individualism mm-hmm. but honestly i think all we actually have proven is that's a pretty word for chaos Speaking of chaos, Fossil and I have been having a lot of conversations about plastic surgery because if you haven't um, gathered by now, (laughs) I have some, como se dice, self-esteem issues. (laughs) So I oftentimes look at plastic surgery. Okay, so let me explain. I have this weird thing where I don't want plastic surgery, right? And I really want to learn to love myself and my body and my appearance. However, I do a lot of research on plastic surgery and the effects it has and what's beneficial, where are the huge amount of cons. That's usually more cons than pros. You say cons. Cons. It almost sounded like you said cons. I looked over. No. You, uh, <laughs> you got me with that one. It's like, did you say cons? No, I said... Cons? With an accent. <laughs> What are you doing? Cons. Cons. C-O-N-S? Yeah, C-O-N-S. Because I think, I mean, everyone knows this. Everyone listening to this is like, yes, we know the dangers of social media and just, but I, I feel like I've been a victim of social media for so long that I really have to start programming myself to recognize what's real and what's fake. And it's even gotten to the point where, I'm going to talk about this, but when my boyfriend and I first started dating, he was definitely a victim to it, but in the way where it didn't affect him, but it affected the way he perceived women. I truly don't think he knew what a real woman looked like at that point because same thing with porn with porn exactly i think he really looked at women and didn't realize that it was all manufactured and not that there's anything wrong i mean whatever you're everything's wrong with it i'm (laughs) sorry i'm putting my foot down everything's wrong fossil is not a supporter of 
plastic surgery. I am not supporter of having plastic surgery because you think it's going to make you feel better. Because it won't. Yeah. There are so many underlying issues to plastic surgery. Because, I mean, like you've said to me before, and this this is really an eye-opening statement. And I know this seems like common knowledge, but it really isn't. Because when you said it to me, I was like, no, you're so right. You don't wake up as a kid hating yourself. You do not. You only start to hate yourself when people tell you you should hate that part of Absolutely. yourself. Absolutely, And that is so true. <laughs> it, yeah. Yeah. And I'm glad to hear you say that. Oh, I'm going to get sad. It's okay. Get sad. I w- I'm happy because I thought that's what the goal was, was that you and I want to be the best us that we can be. And there, I'm not saying if you actually love yourself and say, but I would love myself with, you know, longer lashes. I would love myself with a different nose. But if you think that you're so horrible looking that you, you have to have this, you're already messed up in enough to never be happy. Yeah. But if you say, if I never have that nose job, but you know what? I'd really like it. Then you're golden. I think a lot of people tell themselves that's what it is, but it's fake. The amount of women I see that are like, I'm doing this for me. And you know, they're not doing it for them. Right. You know, and it, like, you can lie to yourself, but I mean, we see through it. Right. And it's sad. It's really sad. Yeah. If you can go along with your life knowing that it'll never happen and you're happy anyway, it will make you feel better. If you think that that is actually going to make you happy, it won't. But going back to the thing I was talking about with my boyfriend, it was literally a thing where it was starting to affect me because I I think he truly didn't understand. Like (laughs) He learned. Yeah, he learned really quick. But that's okay. He learned. I mean, I really had to sit him down and be like, you do realize, like, if you expect people to look like that, and I mean, honestly, me. I think for me, I started having issues because I saw that what he thought things should look like (laughs) that sounds so bad but i don't have fake tits bro like i don't have a fake ass so there was this moment where i had to be like okay you do realize this is plastic surgery this is plastic surgery and that's no bash on the woman that i mean they're they're clearly beautiful but it's because they're manufactured to be perfect you know and if that's what you want as a man um have you ever seen a natural piece of fruit that's not an, an organic piece of fruit yeah they're small They're small, they're usually pitted, or they have flaws, and it's a problem of marketing. Something that is better for us, something that's more healthy, is not usually the most visibly appealing. That is the world we live in now that we've lied to ourselves for so long that we can't even look at what's natural. And I will fight. I will stay single for the rest of my born days (laughs) at this point if I cannot be natural because I'm going to fight that. I don't want to be the shiny, waxy piece of fruit that's going to give you cancer. I would rather be the ugly piece of fruit that's going to nourish you. No, I'm going to be really honest. Like, I, there are so many more things I have to work through. We all do, you know? Um, I can see on your face that it's, it's, it's getting to you, but you know what? (laughs) That's where we grow. No growth is not uncomfortable. Spawn is a lot deeper. That Cancerian hard My Pisces moon is coming out. (laughs) You know what though? I love my Pisces. No one gets to bitches. No one gets to say shit about Pisces. I will fight you. I would like to see us allowed to be flawed. We're allowed to be, you know what? And you're allowed to have fake boobs too. No, but that I will the fight thing. for your right to have, have fake, fake boobs, boobs, but I will also fight with you the why you want them. But that's the thing. I think we need cuz I mean, this sounds judgmental of me again, but like if you get fake boobs, inherently there's nothing wrong with that. No, if there you, isn't. if you decided you want to do that, correct. Girl, go get your fake I'm plastic with you there. titties. But you need to be honest with yourself. It was not for you. It was for the gaze of other people. Because here's the thing, okay? Pretty privilege is a real thing. And that's why we all strive to look a certain way. We think that if we look better, we will be received better. We'll have more money. People will love us more. We'll we'll get more dick. Whatever it is. Whatever it is. Whatever, Whatever it is. But it's not for you. It really isn't. Like, if I get fake lips, which I probably will, if I do that, it's not for me. It's because I want to look hot for everyone else. I like attention. 
there's nothing wrong with that fresh haircut, maybe getting a little color, yeah. putting some makeup on, which is all fake, 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 fake. I'm, I love it. I love getting a haircut and putting on makes makeup. Makes you feel good. It, and you feel, but when I feel like a million bucks, it's because I like what I see. No one else gets to say, you don't look good as a blonde or you don't look good as a brunette. But that's why, that's why no. honestly... But that's one of the many, 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 many things I love about Miss Fossil. Because literally, you'll tell her, oh, I think you look better with longer hair. You know what she does? She's going to cut that shit short. I'll shave it she off. She will shave it the fuck off. Just because she knows, like, she's like, I want it short. You'll be like, mm, it looks better long. She's like, too late. Like, it's gone. You know, it, it, she does not care. And that's such a beautiful thing. And I, a, you and example. I are so different in that respect. Here's an example. Yeah. There was a certain cut that I wanted and usually younger people wear it mm -hmm. and it was shaved on one side, longer on the other, angled at some point. I loved that haircut. I don't know why. It mm -hmm. made me feel younger. Now, I may have looked ridiculous. I think your boyfriend even thought, oh my goodness. I know you probably went, oh, wow. I don't remember what It was the about. shaved side, really short side, and went really long on this side. It was angled up. And I had on my suede jacket. I remember walking out of there. It was like honey blonde. She did mm -hmm. something with a... I don't remember disliking that. There was only one time I ever looked at your hair and you knew too. <laughs> like we both knew. We were like, she... You came home and cried. Like we knew oh, it was Oh, yeah. Now there's... I am fond of the really spiky, short, short mm -hmm. fringy, pixie styles. I think there's a lot of people that can wear that look really well. And there was a certain hairdresser that, at first, she she knew what to do. And then, all of a sudden, she, I, I sat in her chair, and I should have known in the moment that she was in an argument with her boyfriend. Mm -hmm. And she was telling me about it, which I don't mind. Yeah. But you be friends. she was upset, and what she gave me was a man's haircut. And there is a difference between a man's haircut and a short pixie style. And it was bad. That was bad. Now, it wasn't that it was short. I love short hair. It was the fact that it was, it looked, it made me look masculine. And I did not wish to look masculine. Yeah. No, she did you real dirty that day. <laughs> she took all of her anger out on your hair. She did. She did. Yeah. I didn't give her another chance after that, I believe. No. Did I? No, no, no. Uh... Maybe one more, more. time. And we then, had a few problems with this person, um, honestly. She got so, cocky. She got cocky. She thought she could do whatever she wanted to, and it didn't matter, and it did matter. She also said a mean thing about my best, best, best friend, so. Oh, that's yeah, that's I mean. right. <laughs> she treated one of our friends poorly. Like, and one I of remember, our like, close nope. friends, almost family. Yeah. Badly, yeah. It was she so was, weird. Yeah, that was a weird thing. She was just clearly very sad and angry. But yeah, anyways. She took it out on a child. Does not. Yeah, because I was young. We were you like, guys were young. We were like 13. Yeah, and she took it out on you guys, and I didn't like that. Yeah, whatever. Yep. Anyway, bye. Not a problem. Not anymore. a problem. My hair looks fabulous now with it my does. new hairdresser. It does. Um, so there's a, there's a question. How many times do you give your hairdresser a chance before you say... <laughs> oh Okay, I'm moving on. Guys, we I, need to talk about this. I think we should. We need to talk about I have, this. I have a hairdresser currently that I think is a wonderful person. I love her dearly. She's awesome. And in the past, she does the most amazing color work. Just recently, I'm sure if I went to her and said I'm not happy, she would she would be right there. But I, it's at the point where it's shorter than I want it to be right now. And I, I just, I honestly don't want to deal with it. So funny thing is, is growing up in the hairdressing business, there's not a lot of people that would ever give you a second chance. Well, that's the thing. Okay. So, which is why I do. So again, I, everybody has a bad day. I'm sorry. No. Okay. Right now we're trying to cut around masks and I have very but, small ears. But that's different. Okay. If it's because of the pandemic, if I am paying 200 plus dollars Doll hairs, plus a tip, a very expensive tip, and you fuck my shit up, and I walk out of there not liking it, you will not see me again, okay? I'm sorry. I know that sounds harsh, but this is a service. I am paying for you to literally do an aesthetic service, okay? If I ask you to make a piece of art, 
and I don't like the piece of art, I'm not going to buy the piece of art, right? So why would I do it when you do it on my person? I don't feel like there's anything anybody can do without a magic wand that could make me look as fantastic as I want to look. Okay. No, and that's but not there, me cutting myself down, but I know I'm not this gorgeous person. But it's not. And I enjoy short hair and not everybody likes short hair. So there's a lot of people who would look at me and go, Ugh. But here's the thing. Yeah. When my hairdresser does my hair and I pay a bunch of money for it, I leave and I'm like, she did her job. That shit looks good. And I think it looks good. Now, whether anyone else thinks it looks good, doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. But if she did what I asked her to do and it turned out, again, okay, if you ask her, to do something crazy and then it doesn't turn out good like girl that's kind of on you but if i ask you to do a simple ass thing and it doesn't turn out looking good you're not going to see me again when i went to your person very nice lady super freaking sweet very mom energy i walked out and i was like this shit looks busted like i don't like it so i, I didn't okay. go back i don't i honestly don't even understand what you saw that i didn't here's about the thing your hair that day because I it wasn't... just wasn't styled well like your okay. hair dresser and stylist i'm not paying you here's the thing okay mom's hair i feel so bad like is she ever i don't think she would either but mom's hairdresser does this thing where she gives really good cuts most of the time except this past time most of the time she gives really good haircuts but she's not great at styling it and then mom's always like oh that's no big deal like i can just go home and style it nope i'm paying you to style it if i don't like the style what am i paying you for I hear what you're saying. It's so hard to know what somebody else is going to like and not like. It's like paintings. And yeah. You can't do a painting for someone else. I mean, you can, but, um, and I, I don't have a lot of hair, so it's... I don't think she accommodates to the different type of ages, if that makes sense. Like, she has a style as a 50-year-old woman, so whether you are a 15-year-old girl or a 30-year-old woman or a you know, 75 year old woman, you're going to get the same style. You feel she's stuck. I do feel like she's stuck because if I come into you as a 20 year old person, I don't know why I said person, okay, now as a 20 being... year old woman, I don't want to walk out there looking like a 55 year old woman. You may not have said what you wanted. And I think at that point you were such a young teenager that you assumed she knew what you wanted. Yeah. And they, a lot of times, are trying to understand and their vision isn't the same because of the way you presented it. Now, yeah. I don't remember. Your hair was long then. It's still long. So long. To me, that's like, I want a dress. Don't cut the material. No, because I think I just have a very simple thing I want. Like, I really just want you to trim it and, like, give me a nice blowout. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Like, that's really all I want. Mm -hmm. And then, like, if you, if I don't walk out liking a trim and a blowout, like, come on. Here, okay, <laughs> and then I was going to say, in her defense, I was going to say, you know, you didn't give her a picture either of what you wanted, but I'm not, I gonna, give you, I'm not gonna give you a picture of a fucking trim and a blowout. You know whose picture I last showed her? Whose? Chris Jenner. Oh my god. No, that's the didn't. haircut I wanted. <laughs> really? With Chris Jenner's short hair? That's funny. She does Guess have nice what? hair. I don't look like her. No, you look like <laughs> fucking Mo from the Three Stooges, <laughs> bitch. <laughs> I don't even look like what's the son's name? <laughs> I don't even look like Rob Kardashian. There you go. <laughs> that's our beauty tip <laughs> when you go to your hairdresser you should have a, a photo yeah but even i don't like does my hair look like the photo i sent last time to my hairdresser in color in absolutely color. But yeah that's yeah what yeah. We yeah 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 no you're right you're right you're right your color looks exactly like what you showed her and that was brilliant now, as far as the curls and the waves that were in it no it does not well yeah because yeah we didn't do all that <laughs> you didn't do hot rollers and all that stuff yeah no that's fair my thing is that I do stay with my hairdresser and I, I think I will give her one or two more shots because, you know, I think part of it was the mask around the ears did not get cut like I wanted it to. Mm -hmm. And whatever. My only argument to that, because I completely 100% like would understand that, when you went the first time, we were still in the pandemic and she did a really great job. So how do you go from doing a really great job because to not? She, okay, I can tell you how. Because the first time my hair was down past my shoulders, she had to use a razor mm. to do it. This time, it's already short. She's not using a razor like that. She's mm. using a pair of scissors. 
So the scissors tend to leave a more blunt line. And I think that's the difference. I'd be really interested to know if other people feel that way where they just keep going back to... Because again, like... Are you guys loyal to your hairdressers or do you find new ones? But I'm loyal to my hairdresser when they do a good job. Like, I don't want to keep searching for a new fucking hairdresser. Like, I want to stay with the same bitch. That's subjective. It's subjective. You, yeah, you know, but they you, don't know. But you need to do a good job for me. But you also have to speak up when it's not good. Yeah, but I'll be like, oh, can you cut these pieces shorter? And that's what you should do. I'll be like, oh, the front's a little long. Like, can we touch that up? I mean, if they fuck up the color, you're kind of like, I mean, what are you going to do about that? Like, you know what I mean? It's already died. No, they can fix it. They can. Really? I know a lot of people that, have, my mother would torture my hair. Yeah. I was blonde one week and brunette the next and redhead another week. Dude, I, mean, it was I just, all over why did she think that was a good idea for your hair? Oh, we left a play. That was just, yeah, that's, that's what so boring damaging. hairdresser. Yeah, it was. My hair fell out. <laughs> yes, it did. Yeah. Yeah, it's all good. It grows back. So that's about another show. Thanks for joining us for this titillating rendition of mm. Fossil in the Spawn. Mm, my good word. Hopefully we'll see you back next week. And if not, um, bye, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Love you, bye. 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 No, bye. Bye. No, bye. <laughs> bye. <laughs>